Um, so yeah, as Glenn was mentioning, uh, I'll, I'll start with the safety. I always start with the safety. Um, so you'll see me wearing a pair of glasses like this, uh, and they don't really look like much. They're very clear, but these glasses have a special uh, filtration that will protect our eyes from the laser. Um, so this, these lasers here, the, the 2000 XR right there is what I'm using for this demo to try to get uh, full penetration on these plate, these thicker plates. Um, it's, it's a fiber laser with a wavelength of uh, 1070 nanometers. And uh, we can't see this light, but it's very close to being visible. Uh, and because of that, it's able to be focused by the lens of our eye, even though we can't perceive it. Um, so it's important to cover our eyes uh, with these with these special lenses. Uh, the rating these lenses are uh, rated to is OD7 plus, and that's a uh, that's a very very high level of filtration, actually beyond what is typically necessary for this process. But it is what's included with the system, and uh, you know it's always better to be a little extra cautious. Um, so I'm always going to be wearing these as well as a uh, laser welding helmet. This is more the premium model that they offer. Um, you see it's carbon fiber and it's a fixed shade helmet. Um, it has laser protection also built in as well as scratch protection. Um, so this this is a new product and that's like the more premium one, but it is available. And then the laser welding helmet that comes with the system. I'll grab one over here real quick. Hey, John, are you online? Yes, I'm, I, I'm in. Oh, good. I figured I can, this. <laughs> I just thought, hey, man, I better join audio. <laughs> I can hear you too. Okay, man. So this is uh, what the helmet that comes with the system looks like. You can see this one's a little dusty, but it's this one's just a standard welding helmet that's been uh, has a modification put on the front to prevent the plastic from possibly uh, being exposed to the laser light. Um, okay. But this is what comes with the system. This and a pair of glasses. Uh, that is what you need as far as protecting your face and your eyes. Um, I will say this new helmet that they've, they're they offering is a lot nicer to use. <laughs> uh, the other one works, but this one is definitely a, more of a joy to, to wear. Uh, so I just want to make you aware of this one is available, but this is what comes with it. Probably lighter weight, isn't it? Tag on that. Oh, yeah, it's, it's definitely lighter weight. It's more comfortable, lighter weight. Uh, this one, because it's a standard welding helmet with an extra layer, there's about an inch air gap in between and dust can build up. So you have to clean it more often. Uh, this one, you know, you have a you have a stack of lenses. You have a stack of lenses here uh, with multiple layers of laser filtration for different purposes, a tint window, which you can change out for your preference, and then a polycarbonate window for scratch resistance. Um, so it's it's obviously like a lot more simple and uh, you can see better out of it. It's more lightweight. Um, it actually offers more protection than that one does. Um, but uh, the recommendation though is to always wear the glasses under the helmet as well for a for an added layer of safety. Uh, that way, even if you pull the hood off, you still have eye protection on in, in the area of the, the uh, laser use. So... Um, yeah, and then there's multiple styles of these glasses. They're also available in prescription. Um, some of them are designed to fit over small frame prescription glasses. Uh, these are probably my least favorite ones, but these are just what I had on hand. Um, so you can, you know, there's there's a selection available uh, for the glasses. Okay. Um, and then as Glenn was mentioning, the laser welding enclosures that we make, uh, you know, you definitely don't have to buy them from us, but it is a product we offer. Um, the easiest way to keep the the safety uh the area that's uh you designate as your laser safe area uh the easiest way is to build walls around what you're welding if possible uh, sometimes it's not possible um, and in that case what you'd want to do is have a rule where anybody in the area that you designate as your laser uh, safe environment is going to be wearing these glasses as well hey, um, Evan? yes sir um on the enclosure like the one you're in now I know those panels are in certain sections, right? Three, four feet or something like that. These are four by eight. Yeah. Yeah. Can you, if a guy had this enclosure and suddenly he felt from a capacity standpoint, he needed to make it bigger. You can do oh, that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Each, each one of these panels that we designed it specifically for that. Um, 
So it can be rearranged. You can move the door if you want. Each one of these panels is just held together with four bolts. Mm -hmm. and, and you can move the pieces around. Uh, you can, you know, uh, make it bigger. You can, you know, take this door out and add a smaller or a bigger door. Uh, there's there's a lot of flexibility in the way that I designed this. Um, and we, we made it just so that it's, you know, as simple as possible um, and, uh, you know, as modular as possible. You can see the little keyholes on the vertical bars. Those are so you can take a, I believe it's a five, I can't remember the exact size of the bolt. Maybe it's a five sixteenths or a five eighths bolt or something like that. And you could yeah. slip the head through the center part and drop it down so you can make like little quick release hanging mounts and stuff like that. Um, yeah, we try to make it as simple as possible. And then also you see that there's the wire up to towards the top of the image there. That's the uh, safety interlock on the door. Uh, so the laser uses a safety interlock, uh, a redundant safety interlock system to ensure uh, laser safety. So basically Where's that located at you see the little black wire towards oh, the top yeah, of the yeah. archway. Uh, that's a ma magnetic reed switch with a redundant uh, circuit inside of it. So if the door were to open, the laser were to would be sh shut off. And that is something that you want to hook up in your system. Okay. Um, uh, however, you make your door. Um, and if you're interested in pricing on the rooms, Glenn can provide you with uh, some information about that. Yeah. Good. Uh, as far as the other safety measures go, um, it's pretty much, aside from the eyesight safety, it's pretty much the same as your uh, standard welding practice. They want you to wear full coverage clothing and uh, gloves, non-flammable clothing. Um, and I guess the only other thing really is uh, you, you want to try to stay behind or to the side and behind of the welding gun. Uh, you don't want to be facing it towards yourself or towards another person. And in the case of a reflection, it could uh, send some energy their way or your way. Um, so yeah, that's it's pretty pretty straightforward. As long as you follow the safety guidelines, it's a it's a fairly safe process. Um, I do a lot of TIG welding, and I know that that hot tungsten uh, ends up bumping into my leg when I'm hanging it over my lap a lot more than you know. I've only I've burned myself a couple times with this. I have, but it's not uh it's not as often or um, you know any worse than what I've what I've seen with my TIG welding. Okay. Um, okay, so what's the what's the um, what's the severity of injury if people don't take precautions that you just went over as far as let's start with eyewear? Yeah, it needs it's you have to be very strict with it. It's a class four laser. Um, the the eyesight exposure unprotected, uh, you know, may it, it has to hit the lens just in the right way to focus and do the damage that it needs to do. Um, but if it happens, it can it can cause anything from uh, you know dark spots in your eyesight to blindness very quickly, um, and it's not the damage is typically not reversible since it's internal to the eye, whereas your MIG welding process would cause a sunburn on the outside of your eye or on your skin. Uh, this is infrared light, not UV light, so it actually won't give you a sunburn. Um, the 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 glowing metal will give you a sunburn, but the laser itself will not, like the TIG or MIG arc will. Uh, but the the risk to the eyes is definitely higher, so it's very very important to wear these. There's a, there's actually a couple of companies that. What does it do to the skin? What does it do to the skin? The infrared radiation um, that the laser produces won't won't really do anything to the skin except for heat it up if it were to hit it, which which can cause a burn, uh, similar to the like a burn from a, a flame or something. Um, the UV radiation radiating radiating off of the molten material. Uh, can give sunburns, but the, the sunburn risk is much less um, because the uh, there's a lot less UV radiation than there is with a MIG or a TIG. If, if you're around MIG or TIG welding aluminum, especially all the, all the time, you, you know how bright that light is that's given off. Uh, this is not nearly as bright. That's why the shade of the hood is only a, like I have mine on a three. Um, I don't know if you can, let me shine my cell phone light through here and I'll, you get an idea of, yeah, it's I can not see that. Through the lens. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not yeah. it's not very dark because the the weld is not very bright. So, um, so there is still the risk of skin, you know, skin cancer and and uh, sunburn, but it's much much less. It's more about the eyesight safety here. That you know, a lot of times too that at the end of uh, when somebody gets one, they've got to pass a safety course 
before yeah. they can even turn the machine on. Yeah, yeah. I, the code yeah. in the machine that it won't allow you when you receive it. It won't allow you to just turn it on without having filled out and signed the safety course. Yep, so and you go through that. It's I don't know what an hour or so. Yeah, so. probably you watch a few videos and take a quiz, I think, or something like that. Yeah. Um, I haven't done it in a long time, but and then it gives you a code that you put on the machine and unlock it. Uh, yeah. However, only one person has to unlock the machine. So I would recommend implementing your own policy. Maybe maybe somebody uh, in management of your organization come up with their own training uh, based on that video, you know, just so that you can continue that to everybody before they're able to use it. There's also a keyed on off switch on the front of the machine. Uh, so you can actually limit access to, uh, you know, only those who are certified. Yeah. Certified, yes. Yeah. So if you want to do like a checkout system where you trade an ID card for a key or something like that, uh, I don't know. It's it's kind of up to you. Um, you, you have to do your own safety analysis and go about it. I'm sure it, most people do it different ways, um, but but there is a minimum, a bare minimum of uh, taking that course just to turn the machine on for sure. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, okay. Yeah. So I think that pretty much goes over the safety. Uh, I'll talk about the, the system next and the settings, how, how we're going to go about creating a setting. Um, so let me kind of get down to our workspace over here. I use this plate here so that I, if I get full penetration, I can set that section of the weld, you know, over the gap. So I don't glue it to my table. <laughs> right. Um, so that's why I have this here. Um, but yeah, so I'm looking at this and I'm just now realizing that it, these plates have varying thicknesses. I thought they were all the same. Um, some are three sixteenths and some are quarter. I was asked for both coupons. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I used a couple just for testing. Uh, so I, I must've accidentally used most of the quarter. I have one pair of quarter left and then the others are three sixteenths. Um, okay. Let me, uh, I'll kind of show you on one of the quarter and ones. You know, just doing some testing, I was able to I was changing some settings around and just kind of learning it. This is actually uh, my first time using the the two thousand machine. Uh, we just got this one in, so uh, I was oh, kind of playing. The two thousand now. Yeah, I got the two thousand here. Oh wow. Um. Yeah. So this is quarter inch, full penetration, just from one side. Uh. And I was just kind of playing with it, but so that's the quarter inch. Just so <laughs> I know you're only going to see me do it once, but that is another example of it. So what side uh, did you weld? From. Show me the side you welded it from. Uh, actually, at one point I flipped it over, but I think, uh, no, I'm wrong. It was welded from this side. Okay, and so were those parts butted together with no gap or no bevel? Yes. No, no gap, no bevel, butted together, and then that went all the way through the other side? Yeah, this one was too much power. <laughs> uh, I had it on 2,000 watts. This was uh, 1,800 watts. This is probably the section that I would judge it based on. That's the settings that they recommend. I was kind of playing with it on the other ones. So that's from yeah. here only, and that's the back wow. of the weld. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. No and bevel then, and no gap. No bevel, no gap. You can see the distortion is, it's a little bit of bowing, although I did weld this section twice. Very This, this end section has weld on both sides, actually. I started on this side, and then I turned it over. Nice um, but yeah, you see it's uh, minimal minimal distortion, and that's that's a whole lot of energy that we're putting into that piece of metal. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I'll show you how I go about finding these settings. Uh, what's really nice is that they, you know, your average welder doesn't know anything about lasers. Um, so they made it so that you you don't really have to know a lot about lasers to use this. So. You need to know about the safety mainly. Um, but other than that, there's, there's, this is kind of like the, this is just a copy of the chart. Normally there's colors and stuff, but um, let's see. That's in view there. So this is wire welding. So this is the one I'm going to refer to. Oh, show uh, how, them the aluminum one. It's on the other side of that one. Oh, oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay. So on the, yeah, other, this, on the other side of that is the aluminum. I, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is a chart for wire welding of stainless, mild steel, and nickel. Uh, and then we'll switch over to the aluminum. I see how they did it. Okay, that makes it easier. 
Uh, the chart changed a little bit from the older machine, so I'm familiarizing myself with it. Um, so wire welding, we have 5,000, 6,000 series aluminum and copper. So these would be considered your like highly reflective materials um, to the infrared light. So I was also going to ask, what alloy is this? Is this 6061? It's 5356. Yep, that's what's labeled on your pipe paper too, 5356. Oh, okay, yeah. So that's the filler wire that I have is 5356. So that's good compatibility. Oh, I'm sorry. Right? The 5350. I'm sorry. 5356 is our wire filament that we use here. That plate I sent down to you is 5052. Right. 5052. Okay, perfect. So uh, what we'll do then is we will go to aluminum five triple X, which is like 5,000 series aluminum. Correct. And then uh, I'll have argon gas, which is what I have set up. 5356 wire, which is also what I have set up. Uh, and it's recommending an 047 diameter, which is what I'm using. Uh, however, you can you can change that a little bit if you need, but yeah, that works perfect for laser. Um, and then program F2. Uh, so what I'll do is, I can do this a couple different ways. I'll start off the basic way, um, and then I'll kind of show you another so option. F2. That F2 that doesn't com that doesn't have to be compatible with the thickness of, of aluminum you're trying to weld. So the F2 is going to be a is going to be a base setting and I'll, I was, I should I should probably just go over that part okay, also, right? Origin for um, tech tables. Yeah, so so you're going to start off with F2 and then you could see to the right based on the material thickness or the penetration depth we're looking to get, we'll turn the power and the wire speed. Yep. So for this instance Up to 3 uh, yeah, up to three gauge, I get a uh, three gauge. Yeah. So, uh, so for this instance, let's start off with the three sixteenths, I guess, because I got a lot more of that. Uh, so the three sixteenths uh, is one eighty five ish, right? So mm -hmm. I should be able to get away with uh, six, six or four. Um, I'll start with six. I think that might make it through. So it's telling me to go thir F2, 1300 watts, 50 centimeters a minute on my my travel speed to get uh, um, 162 thousandths penetration. And that might vary slightly based on if your wire speeder is perfectly accurate or not. Uh, sometimes I've seen a variance in them. So you might have to kind of figure out the speed that you actually want to run, but that's the, that's, this is a really good starting point. And most, for the most part, this is going to work, right? So you can see it's real easy to use. You don't really have to be familiar with like laser parameters or anything. Um, so I'll go over to the machine and I'll show you F2, 1300 watts. Okay, so I'm going to go here to change my settings. So I can sc scroll through the first character by long pressing these buttons. So you see I'll hold this and it'll change through the first character. So I got E, F. And then the second character is going to be quick presses. So we'll go to F2. We'll go here for the power. Was that F2? Sorry, was that F2 or F6? F2. Oh, so F2. Okay, F2. All right. And then we'll go to 1300 watts. Um, and then let me, it looks like there might be a change here. I'll, I'm going to find out if that's a default by resetting this parameter. I'm just going to reset it completely and then see if it, uh, if that's it. Somebody had changed that at some point. So it'll flash, I'll reset it. Yeah, it was. It, there was a change made. So I'm gonna start over F2, 1300. So what I can do is if I want this to be my default, if this is kind of my standard go-to setting, I can hold this, oops, I, ch I changed it. Um, I can hold these two buttons for two seconds. You see it stops flashing. The flashing indicates there was a change made to the preset. When it's not flashing, it means you're on your preset. Um, now, if I want to reset and take, you know, undo that that override, I can hold these for six seconds and it'll put it back to its factory setting. Uh, but this will allow it to be so that whenever I go back to F2, it defaults to that setting that I set. Neat. Okay. Yeah. So you can do that, and you can also make custom settings. Um, there's two more controls here I need to discuss. So these ones have to do with the wobble of the laser beam. So laser beam is very small. It's about two thousandths of an inch in diameter. 
Um, so to make a reasonably sized weld, it, it, it scans side to side. So like, you know, at the grocery store, there's the barcode scanner and it has that red stripe. Uh, this is doing the same thing. It basically takes that single laser beam and really fast goes back and forth. That's all going to be built into these settings, but there's some changes you can make. You can go uh, on, on this 2000 model, you can go 90% wider or 90% narrower. And then you can also go uh, 100% faster or 99% faster or 99% slower than the factory wobble setting. Uh, now, most of the time, you're not going to have to deal with these. However, when you're getting into the deepest uh, penetration depths that the chart recommends, it's going to tell you to change this in some way, typically negative 50%, or actually, sorry, not the width, the frequency. Uh, it'll tell you to go a little bit narrower on the frequency, and it's going to slow the path of the laser beam down. You're also going to slow your wire down, and it's going to get you that extra bit of uh, welding depth. So basically slower and narrower gives you increased penetration depth, more focused energy. Uh, wider and faster is going to uh, make your weld wider, but it's going to at the cost of less penetration. So, uh, but the, in this kit, yeah, exactly. So in this case, uh, this setting doesn't tell us to do anything. So I'm going to leave it like that. Um, and And then my wire feeder, I do have a different wire feeder than what you'll get set up right now, just because I have it set up for the robot and the robot uses it. Uh, we have this kind of experimental one for the robot right now. Uh, but the, the newest wire feeder that IPG is sending with their welders is very, very good. Um, it's actually probably uh, maybe even a little more accurate than this because it has a stepper drive in it. Um, so it's very, very precise, just as precise as this one. So, um, so and I'll set my speed here in centimeters a minute. Um, the wire feeders also, you can set up a delay. So once you fire the laser, there's a slight delay before the wire feeds, which can help with getting a little bit of heat into the metal, uh, before you go on with your weld. Um, so let's see on this one, it said 1300 Watts, 50 centimeters a minute. I have half a meter a minute. So it's 50 centimeters a minute. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to leave that there. That's on yours, the only difference is it's just going to say 50 instead of 0.5. All right, so that's how I set up my settings on the front face of the machine. Um, now, there is another option. Uh, I don't have it here to show you exactly, but I can kind of give you a an example of it. So this is the robot controller, but, but we have a uh, a tablet that's wireless that's available. And it'll allow you to access this light weld user interface. Uh, this interface is going to let you not only choose any of these settings that are on this chart, but also you can make custom settings. So you're not limited to F2, F5. You know, you can choose user, and then you can choose a user index number, and you can completely customize your own settings and save them onto the machine. You can have the laser be on continuously, continuous wave. You could do a timed weld for tack. Modulation is pulsing of the laser beam. Uh, most of the time you'll use that just for limiting overall heat input for like thinner materials. Um, there's high peak power, which I haven't quite gotten a grasp on how to use that, but it lets you go higher than the than you could typically go on the power for a limited duty cycle. Stitch welding, so it's timed on off uh, of your weld cleaning and something called advanced stitch, which again, I'm not familiar with that one. Um, but yeah, this this interface, if you're ever gonna do anything that's not on the chart or like something experimental, you know, you wanna weld something extra thin or, you know, some, just anything a little bit off the wall, this, this is gonna be invaluable to you because you can just do like a lot of experimentation and a lot of adjustments that you otherwise couldn't do. Um, okay. Now you can do this with either our tablet through our application that we've developed, or you could also just plug in a laptop with an ethernet cord and configure that and you could do it there too. Um, yeah, so that's another uh, way to go about changing your settings. Uh, it's helpful in my instance because my welder a lot of times is hard to reach with the robotic setup that I have going on here. Um, so I can just use the tablet right here. Your biggest robot goes what, a 70? 
74 yeah. inches. 74 yeah. inches. Yeah, I'll kind of give you an idea of the sizing here. Oh, wow. This is something that Sarah and Fanuc developed together. I'm Fanuc. Some of these people call it Fanuc also. Yeah, I think it, the Japanese way of saying it would be Fanuc. Fanuc. And yeah, Fanuc. Are you guys familiar with Fanuc at all? No. Yeah. Yeah, we're. Uh, are you talking to me or? No, them. Yeah, Munson's. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm not. Um, I'll get up here and show you how tall this thing is. So I'm like five nine, you know, standard. Let's see. It's got a pretty good reach on it. <laughs> Holy smokes! And it, and it, just because it's big, it's not really. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's. It's hard to maneuver. Um, they're pretty. Pretty simple. Uh, let's see. Kind of bring this down. You you can move them by hand because uh, they're collaborative robots, so you can actually grab onto it and kind of jog it around by hand. Um, and it's it's big, but it's just as easy to move around as the smaller ones. So that's pretty impressive. I have not seen anything like that before. And then you can see we have the light weld on here. We have a seam finding. Attachment on there. Something which... like what, twenty or twenty-five of these out in the field, Glenn? Yeah, just over thirty. Yeah, thirty now. Wow. Last time I talked to you, it was like twenty. Yeah. It's nuts. And they, the end user, can take a standard unit and get a robot down the road and be able to attach it. Yeah, you can. Yeah. You can take it on and off. You can switch between the two handheld and robot mode in let under five minutes. Yeah, so it's the same welder, so you can, you know, take it on and off. Some things you might not want a robot weld, or it doesn't make sense. But you can see it's pretty easy for. I mean, I'm pushing it with my pinky right here, so it's sure. it's pretty easy to uh, manipulate, even though it's big. You got it's three large... different sizes, I think it is, or two. Yeah, there's three, 49, 55, and 74 inches. Yeah. And then, are you gonna go through the gun, Evan? Yep. Yeah, I'm going to go through everything. Okay, so I got the settings out of the way. I showed you the tablet, the robot. Okay, so yeah, let's go over the gun. Um, so this is the light weld gun. Uh, the, the change in colors a little bit, depending on the model. This is the 2000 with the, with the red. Um, the wire feeder attachment is here. When you're using like a fusion weld setting, you're not going to, if you're not going to use the wire, you basically just take this off and replace it with a nozzle that doesn't have this clamp on it. Uh, so that'll be for fusion welding. And you can see it, it has like a, a collet here. So you, you make sure it's nice and centered and then you tighten the collet. Um, there's two triggers here. This one is going to flow gas. So when I pull this, as long as my door is closed, I have gas flowing out of the nozzle, argon gas. Uh, that's going to act as my shield gas and also plume control, which will push. Uh, vaporized material out of the way so that the light can get to the surface effectively. Um, the green light is indicating that my door is closed. Once I make contact with my surface or my material, I'll get the flashing green light. And that's a safety circuit. There's actually a little clamp on the, the table over there. And that makes sure that we're touching the surface while welding. Uh, and that does two things. One, ensures that we don't fire the laser unintentionally uh, in the direction of not your metal <laughs> and then uh two it ensures that we have the correct distance because there's a the focus distance of a laser is critical you know to make the best use of the uh, the energy so when we're touching we're at the right distance here the lens is here and the laser focus point is here um so yeah we'll pull this first trigger touch the surface and then we can pull the second trigger which will fire the laser and feed the wire simultaneously um, as far as consumables go, these nozzle tube tips, the copper tips, uh, they're considered consumable, but they're very slow wearing items. Um, they typically don't wear out when you're using the, the filler wire because the wire is actually what's making contact with the surface. 
when you're fusion welding, you are directly dragging that on the surface. So it will eventually wear out, but not very fast. These are about 50 bucks a piece, these copper nozzles. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a cover window. See that little piece of uh, glass right there? I don't know okay. if I can get a glimmer on it. That's I a protect. Okay, that's a protective window that keeps contaminants from reaching the focus lens of the welder, which is here. Uh, so this window is about $15. Uh, they're kind of replaced on an as-needed basis. If it's dirty, uh, you'll want to replace it. I would get in the habit of doing re routine and cleanly checks of it, because if it is dirty, it will affect the performance. Um, so, you know, that's uh, some of the aerospace companies that use this. They put they have a schedule where they, you know, they may replace it, you know, once in a day or maybe more often or maybe less often. It kind of depends on uh, how much contamination is coming off of what you're welding or, or how clean your area is. Um, so there's a lot of things to know about like the cleanliness, but it's, it's pretty simple. Basically, uh, you want to try to keep the nozzle when you're not in use, you want to try to keep the nozzle in a downwards position, or you could put this little red cap on the end of it, keep dust out of there. Um, and then, you know, when you're, when you're checking that, or when you're changing that little window, you just, you, you ideally want to wear some, uh, put some rubber gloves on and do it where there's no, like not a lot of dust in the area. Um, yeah, but as long as those, that, that window in the lens is clean, uh, the thing performs amazing. It is, however, it does have to get the light through those lenses. So it's very important to keep them clean. Uh, and those are the only two consumable items, um, other than your gas and your wire. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll just get into welding. Do you have any questions about any of that, that, that I was mentioning there? Yeah. No, the... That was pretty straightforward for me. Yeah, I mean, I know you want to butt weld this, but the welds that they're doing on those tanks, like uh -huh. in the culture, they'll bring the two inner edges together, and then they'll fill that gap with a pretty wide bead. Jeez, and that's right. what we're oh, talking like, about overlapping it. Yeah, without over turn that without overlapping ninety degrees. Got it. Okay, without overlapping. Yeah. No, with, with that's without overlapping, but the recommendation oh. from these sure. guys is to overlap it at least a minimum of 50%, maybe a little more, and then yeah. just weld it right down to it, you know? Got it. Yep, yep. Unless you yeah. got any good ideas, you know, because but what you're doing is you're button, you're budding a 90 degree right there. Yeah. I could get, I could get full penetration like this or. Yeah. Or I could do like half to three quarter overlap. I may, because of the size of the laser weld is fairly small, I may not completely fill in the corner, but I will be able to get really good root penetration. So, um, kind of a trade off. If I butt it up, I'll Let's get, do one you know, of each. Let's do one of each. Sounds good. All right. I'll just get right into it then. I'm going to throw my gloves on and my helmet. Let's do this. Is that quarter inch that you have there? This one is three sixteenths. Okay, let's do the overlap, 50% on 3 sixteenths. Okay. And then when we take the quarter inch, we'll do a butt, a butt 90 degrees and see if we can get yeah. a little pen on quarter inch, butt 90. Okay. Yeah, no. the other thing you might notice, I mean, if this all works out, I know that you guys weld the outside and the inside of the tank, right? We do. You know, I mean, this this application may, maybe not, but, you know, it depends on what you want to do. Our time be and able to get away with getting full penetration on you on your welds and not even have to do the inside yeah That's and right. maybe less maybe less than half because the welding itself is a lot faster anyways yeah i'm gonna try to get as much of this you know facing your direction as possible but i am right-handed and the camera's orientation is not ideal so i might have to kind of do a little bit out of view but i'll do my best here Oh, you know what? I forgot to switch it back after I was showing you the custom settings. So let me make sure I'm on the correct setting here. I have two. Oh, I got to do a moment here. I haven't hooked this up to the robot yet. Um, so it wasn't reacting how I was expecting it there. 
Okay, F2, 1300 watts. Sure, it's nice and some maybe a tad bit more than half overlap here. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to do it on this angle so you can see. And then uh, I'll tack another little piece of aluminum to it so I can hold it easier. All right, so you see there, I've got <laughs> done some uh, 40 thousandths to the 3 16ths pretty easily. Uh, yeah, so I'll run this bead here and let me zoom in also. Here's the setup. I am thinking about the angle that I'm holding it to ensure that I am piercing through the metal in a, you know, the optimal direction. Check it out. Yep, full penetration. That was perfect. That's just the setting that's recommended, and it's actually a little bit. Recommended for slightly thinner material than this. Okay, so that's the penetration there. Wow. Let me. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put this on hold and see if I can't get Doug in here. He's he was busy when you guys when we first started this. Can I uh -huh. see if he's available now? Now that we've gone yeah. through this. Thank sure you. thing. I'll put a. Um, I'm going to mute. I'm going to run to the restroom for a minute here. Thank you for calling. We appreciate your business, and we're sorry to keep you waiting. Please continue to hold. Someone will be with you soon. All right, guys, he'll, he'll be coming down. We can keep going here, though. Yeah, he just went to the bathroom while you were doing oh, okay, that. Okay, good. All right, good. He'll That'll be right done. back. All right, great. So what do you guys think so far? I mean, when you look at that weld, the way he did it, it puts out a real thin weld, but he can create more of a wobble and lay down more material if needed, or maybe he overlaps it all the way and then just melds everything together somehow yeah no i'm i mean obviously when we went over to smiley's that one morning yeah they were unable to and 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 no defend you know to, to defend them they just had yeah, no they experience doing just really thin stuff yeah and they didn't they tried to do a little aluminum while we were there but yeah they were not even close to being able to show me what he just did a, a few minutes ago no uh -uh. Usually, so, it, you know, if a guy gets into welding aluminum of any thicknesses, it's going to take, you know, for him to get used to it and really get good at it, week, two weeks, some depending on the welder, I guess. But sure, no, uh, I get that. I get that. You know, once they get it down, it's pretty astronomical. I mean, I've the one guy I asked uh, uh, Glenn about the robots because they had, you know, put those out in the last just few months. And uh, there's one up here in Spokane. I want to go visit it. Econolite. And uh, they're like a lighting company, lighting fixture company. So hang on to that coupon there that you just welded. Let me ask you something about that. Yeah. Are you, are you back with us? Yeah. Hey. You back with uh, us? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so how... How much heat's in that part right now? 
Ooh, this part's a little hot. <laughs> it's it's a lot less than what you'd see with a TIG or a MIG. Uh, so so let me explain something to you. Um, in a millimeter squared area, uh, the energy of an arc weld, so TIG, MIG, stick, is 50 watts in a millimeter squared. Uh, in this single mode laser beam, it's 10,000 watts. So it's 200 times as energy dense as your standard arc weld, which means that you're putting the heat where you need it, but you're not wasting. You, you waste most of the electricity with the typical welding. It's it's far less than 50% efficient with mm. with uh with arc welding. Um, yeah, and and the that's why the part gets so hot. You're just sending energy where it doesn't need to go. Um, with the laser, it's so electrically efficient, so such a focused energy uh, that the the parts never get as hot. It's not. Like with aluminum, I'll wear gloves, right? And I, I shouldn't say this. You should wear gloves with any material that you're welding. Um, with stainless, I, I, I don't wear gloves. <laughs> they, the material retains its heat and it's so focused that it, it doesn't get hot. It's crazy. It gets hot within about an inch of the weld, but it, it doesn't. Um, it's just very, very, very focused heat. So the reason I ask is once, since aluminum holds the heat like it does when you MIG weld, that part would be super hot and you would not want to go back and uh, put any more weld to that or the welds, you just, yeah, you're, not, you're not efficient because the part's too hot, okay, really? Yep. And so I guess what I was going to try to ask you to do is change the wobble speed and mm -hmm. widen the weld out and can you go over that pass and see if you widened it if it would fill that trough yeah sure it might even be able to do it on a single pass this was just the factory setting no um, i know that's what i was seeing if like what you were saying the width of it you can change mm -hmm. the wobble to widen the weld yeah it will use more fillet won't it will it use more fillet because it's going to go back and forth at a wider pattern it's kind of no, it, act, it is actually going to use the same amount of wire. Um, the reason being is the way the way this functions is you see the wire comes out from below. So when it's welding, it's actually pushing the gun back. See that? Yeah, I see that. So it's not yeah. like a MIG where you're feeding a million feet a second. It's 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 you use very little wire with this. Uh, my spools of wire typically last me years. <laughs> um you can introduce more wire but it is actually the the better way to do it uh to ensure that you're actually getting a good weld is is to do a multi-pass if you want to build up a lot but widening it will help grab more material from these uh pieces themselves so i'll be able to include more of the base material uh and get a bigger radius to the overall weld it's not really going to pile up per se but it, you can spread it out and make it a little bit more uh, yeah, radius. We're just trying to see if we could see what that looked like. If yeah, yeah. Widened. Yeah, I'll do it. Do, uh, is your counterpart there? I know you said you were grabbing somebody. No, but he will be. You can. He's. I hear him outside the door. He might be close, but he's, okay. he's with somebody right now. So. Okay. No problem. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna go right over to my machine then, and I'm just gonna turn it up. I, I may have to play with the settings. Um, I'm glad I have a couple extra pieces here, but. Um, you know, if I widen it, I should get less penetration. So I, I'm going to try it first, and then I'm going to see if I even need to put more power into it. Or I you could don't just think that's a good. How about just putting one over that existing weld you just did, so we don't have to waste a coupon. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll do that. Then I don't have to worry too much about the, the penetration because I'm already through. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I'm going to go here. Typically, if you just run a if you run a softer pass over it with like less less energy, um, you know, it act, it'll sit a little bit more proud also because you're not sinking it down as much. Mm -hmm. So you went negative nine? No, I went positive nine. I'm just going to go as wide as it'll go. We'll see what, see what it looks like. Okay. I'm curious because the, uh, the previous models, maybe it's just the newest software. Um, the previous models only went 50% wider. So this is 90% wider. So I'm kind of curious as to what it looks like. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, let me let me zoom in on the laser beam. We'll kind of see what. It... Yeah, see that. Yeah. So that's pretty wide. <laughs> wow. We'll see. We'll see what it does. All right, here we go. Get my wire stick out. Let's go.
I'll just do half so you can have a comparison when you get these back. There we go. Wow, that looks good. That worked really, really well. Wow. <laughs> it looks looks like a perfect TIG now. Wow. So that's a lot wider than the 1500. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I guess, another 50% over whatever it would have been. Wow. That's pretty impressive right there. Holy cow. And a yeah, lot less wire. And this might i don't i i can't say for sure that this is a 2000 only thing the width uh yeah. i i'm this new software that came on this new newest machine may come on all the new machines i'll have to look into that okay. uh the, the plus 50 the plus 90 over the plus 50 you know yeah wow that's impressive that's wow. full penetration well, that it was already penetrated, so I, I could I could almost certainly do that on the first pass. Yeah. Um, but this was a double pass, so I can't really say for sure. But I can do another one. You want to do it on the inside, you guys? Well, if this would be this would be uh, you know for us welding it on the outside and not having to weld the whole inside and doing all the cleanup either. So. Oh yeah. Um, the outside. If you welded the inside, it would look pretty ugly on the outside too, because you're you're penetrating through, but on like this wider sure. area, it would look kind of funny. <laughs> no, we've done this right. You would want we would want to do it on the outside and skip all. The, you know, we're doing all the inside welding too, 100% inside now. It's so a lot of time. A bunch of steps, a bunch of time, and a bunch of cleanup. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say the best bet would be to do it on the outside and then inspect the inside. If you have a little spot where it doesn't go through, you know, touch it up, but. But definitely try to avoid <laughs> double the work. Sure. Okay. Uh, so do you want me to do another piece of three sixteenths? So, with just yeah, a, so with we're a... gonna do that was three sixteenths. You can do that as a butt ninety. Okay. Um, I was. Lap. Would you mind if I try to tried one with the wider pass just as is, like the same as the yeah, last one? Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Yep. One okay, pass so wider at ninety percent wider, whatever. Let's try it. Looks like it'll probably need a little bit more juice, so I'm definitely going to run over there and crank it up, um, maybe 100 watts or something. 1,300 to so 1,400. 1,800, now you're going to go 14? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, because I've spread it out quite a bit, so I'm, I definitely pulled back the penetration a little bit. So let's... Uh, Clamp this one so I don't have to weld anything to it. So I'm going to do a couple inches and then kind of check my progress and then make adjustments if I need to. Oh. So Doesn't look as good. It might be better to do that as a capping pass. I think it uh, needs. It might it might be a little too wide for like getting the root penetration. Let me let me try a little bit more. Okay, I just needed to get the weld more established first, so I kind of paused at the beginning, and that seems to have done it for me. Wow. Let's see. And the angle might vary a little bit. Yeah, so maybe it could even use a little more. We have some penetration, and it's probably almost all the way through the whole way, but, um, but it looks like it needs a little bit more heat. Let me just slow the wire down. Let me try that. I'll just slow the wire down a little bit. That'll give us more penetration also. And this wire is just pushing me along. Look, I can just like weld it and let the part be pushed by the wire. I see that. <laughs> wow. 
So I'm just practically, you know, maintaining angle. So yeah, that's a single pass. Maybe too slow. I mean, I got excessive penetration there, but Sweet. you get the idea. <laughs> you toy with it a little bit. Um, and uh, you can figure it out. That part's hot, huh? It's hot, but not yeah. smoking my leather gloves. So. Yeah, that looks great. What's the penetration on the last three inches that you did, or two inches? It beyond beyond what okay. what I okay. was expecting. <laughs> how much did, how much of that do you think was from turning it up, or was that from the part getting hot as well? Some Slow. of it was probably the part getting hot, but um. But I think what the slowing down of the wire speed did quite a bit as well. Sure. The best way to tell so would be just do a fresh a one. Of... Sorry, go for it. It's a it's a matter of settings and getting your parameters all set for what you're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you, and it you're not going to be able to avoid you know on a small coupon like this, you're always going to have to deal with the part getting hot and changing things at the end a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. How big are the parts you're welding? Are they pretty large? Oh, we can, I mean, these could be anywhere from 40 gallon fuel tanks all the way to 350, 400 gallon fuel tanks. Oh, okay. So, yeah, you probably won't really have as much of an issue because your part will have more space for the heat to go then. Oh, absolutely. Um, and once we dialed in settings, it would be the same, same quarter inch fuel tanks being welded every single time, no matter how many gallons they are. They're, they're fit up and set up the same way. So, once you dial in a setting for this machine, it would just be a default all the time. How many of these tanks do you do a year? Or what What well, 80% we of them are what? Build, we're going to build 70 boats this year. Some tank, some boats get single tanks and some t tanks get dual fuel tanks. And then we got diesel heater tanks. And so, I mean, there's multiple tanks. So I'm going to say probably well over 150 tanks a year. Wow. You know, that's so gonna, 12 a month. 12 a month. That's, that's a lot of tanks. <laughs> Is quarter the thickest aluminum you're using on the tanks? Yeah, all of our tanks are quarter except for our, our small cabin heater tanks that are three sixteenths, and those are typically five and ten gallon tanks for diesel fuel. Okay, and it's all being bench mount welded, right? Yeah, it's all bench welded. Yeah, it's all bench welded. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna try the the complete overlap now, the butt joint on the corner. And I put the settings back to how they were initially, just the factory setting. Like F2-1300 is what you started with? Yeah. Because of the geometry, uh, you know, since the heat is traveling, piercing this way, it may not, you might not see the full penetration on this joint. It might kind of rob some of the heat onto this, this piece. Uh, so we may have to either add a little bit of an angle so instead of coming in at a butt, just kind of hit it like this or just turn the power up. We'll, we'll see. Um, yeah, I'll just give it a go. Yeah. I'm going to stand this up here. Actually, yeah, you'd actually want that part to stand up 90 degrees like you had just had it. Like this, yeah. So I'll, I'm just going to hold yeah. it with these pliers. And I got my wire speed back to 50. There you go. Let's zoom in a little bit on this one. So we about halfway, check out the back side. Yeah, I'm, it, it could use just a hair more, maybe. It's penetrating. Yeah, it's penetrating for sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah, so let's let's try to just try a little slower speed again. I kind of like doing that. I like the control of going slower. So um, whereas I could definitely change the parameters, which might be the better way to do it. I find myself just changing speed to adjust small adjustments like that. And if I get it just right, it looks like 
what it's doing is it's grabbing the corner. So it's actually taking that sharp edge off also. The, the weld pool is melting over that hard corner. So I actually got a nice radius on it also. So that looks pretty nice actually. What I did is I, I actually introduced a little bit more angle to try to, um, oops, try to get a little bit more heat into the vertical piece. And then that changed the Flyers aren't very good for grabbing stuff. So obviously, obviously you're either, you can see really well because you're, I see you driving a really straight line. Yeah, you can see really well. <laughs> it's really easy to see with this helmet. Yeah, well, I can tell just by the way, you know, your line, your, your weld is it's straight. It's not zigzag and it's not like you're having a trouble seeing the, the weld zone or that. So that these weld parts zone. are all being cut on a router? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because it seems like with the nozzles, when you go to put them in a groove of some sort, just a little bit, it helps you guide that. Yeah, I, I was actually just, while during that weld, I was thinking about how much I was thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was, I was going to say, the way that I go about welding when I do butt joints, because I don't want to have to make sure I'm staying online on track, is I, not a file typically I'll use the sander, but I will just put the smallest chamfer and it's not to aid penetration depth. It's just so that the it's wire, it's not even a visual. It's, it's so that the wire actually sits in a small valley and it wants mm. to stay on track. Kind of like putting a bevel on it a little bit. Yeah. Just the small, smallest bevel, you know, you don't, you can barely even tell. It's basically like you're just taking the edge off of it. And now oh, when it's like I'm that wire following that groove, that trough. Yeah, yeah. So now yeah. the wire will just, you know, you see it, it it gives the wire something to lock onto. Yeah, it gives it a tooth to hang on to. Because otherwise I can skate all over the place. So so I was thinking real hard about keeping it on track. But if you just take a, you know, you don't have to be precise with it or anything. You take a random orbital or whatever and zoop, one pass down it, that's enough. Okay, hang on. I'm going to put you on speakerphone, Doug, Doug freed up. Hang on. Okay. Thank you for calling. We appreciate your business and we're sorry. All right. You guys there? Yeah. 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 Okay. I put you on, I put you on speakerphone. I got Doug. Um, hey, could we grab that first one that we welded up? The quarter? Yeah. That one right, that, that one right there with the tab on it. Okay. Zoom in on that a little bit or bring it up to the camera. I want to talk to Doug and tell him what we did here. So we fit this up. This was quarter, three, that was 3 16 The first one we did was 3 16 Yep. Yeah. Okay, and so what we did is we we didn't fit it up. Show them the quarter, the other end, quarter to corner. Show them the, the, the root, the root side. There you oh, go, right there. Oh, this one, okay. Sorry, the yeah. camera, it's hard for me to figure out which way to manipulate the camera. Uh, so flip it over so I can see the outside. There you go. Stop right there. Okay. So we fit this up three sixteenths, almost corner to corner. It was yeah. a little overlap. Yeah. And it wasn't true corner to corner. Right. He ran this one right here, the root. Yeah. And when he ran, zoom in on that root a little bit, can you? Yeah, it's getting fuzzy. There you go. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. So now flip it on the inside and show him the the penetration on that corner to corner. Fucking amazing. Look at this. Okay. Stop right there. Let it focus. Is it focused? Yeah. Uh, almost. Mm -hmm. All right. Right there. Wow. One pass yeah. from the outside. So. Yeah. Okay, then I asked him, flip it back over and go where half of the weld where we widened the, uh, what do we call that? We widened the uh, wobble. Wobble, wobble, yeah. So all he did was go, I asked him, go over and widen the wobble and weld. Now set it down on the table, would you please, so we can see the whole thing? Yeah. So he, what he did is he widened the wobble and he welded about three inches perfect right there and he just welded that much with the wobble wider just 
filled the group. It was already 100% penetration from the inside. So the width of the, that's the wobble. So yeah. Can you explain the, the wobble and the widened arc to Doug? Okay, so, so that little red dot that you see, easy to see on this white paper, isn't it? The little yeah. white, the white dot that you see is the, is representative of the position of the laser beam. It's just a guide beam. That laser beam is only two thousandths of an inch in diameter. So the there's a there's a galvanometer right here, like a mirror that goes like this, and it widens the path of the laser. See that? And we have control over that. So that's default right there. You can see uh, you can see the size. Right. Gotcha. Yep. And then and then I'm gonna go over to the machine and I'm just gonna turn the knob to what I did there, which was I just night I did a 90% increase, which is the max allowable on the factory settings. You can actually go wider than that, but that's the you know what you can do to the just the box setting. So you could see it's it's almost a hundred percent wider, it's a ninety percent increase. So I went yeah. over it with nothing changed except for that. And then it was able to uh, essentially borrow more of the base material and then add an additional uh, length of 045 wire. Something to, wire. Consider, something to consider here is the wire length that I'm using. If you MIG welded this, you'd probably use four times this much wire, at least. Um, with the laser, I used this much wire and then plus this much wire. So that's why the welds are small. You just use, you know, the length of wire is the length of your weld. So at doing this wider, I basically borrowed more of this material and added another, you know, four inches of 045. What about the length of time to do that length of weld? Yeah, I mean, it's it's, a, it's fast. We're gonna it's... show Doug that in a minute. Now grab that other part that we did a butt weld, mm -hmm. a 90 degree butt weld, grab that one. The one we just got done doing. Yeah, this one's hot. <laughs> so now we took quarter inch and went completely like this. This one's three sixteenths also, actually, just to be clear. Or three sixteenths, sorry. And we butt yeah. he butt welded that and he stood it up on end with his pliers. So he put this vertical like that. And he ran down on the vertical piece. And the penetration, look at the penetration on the inside after he flips this over. Still, we could use a tiny bit more power, but we still have another two, uh, 700 watts to go. <laughs> That's all in settings, like we were talking. Yeah, yeah, it's just settings. About yeah, a quarter and you weld on the vertical. And once you set up the heat and the, you know, once you set it up, you'll get the same penetration every time. This was first whack at him. Yeah. So let me let me let me go through the center of the plate where there's no seam and show you that. Okay. You want to see you want to see that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll just go I'll go right through it with no with no no join at all. I'm going to set back to the uh, uh factory width. Let's give it a go. And how many watts is this? 1300. This is the recommendation for this thickness. Looks like a snake. Crater. I'm going to try to fill the crater here a little bit. You can kind of like drag out the end of the weld and then it just solves your craters. So one side, show us, that's the back side. This is the front side. This is the back side. Back side, yeah. Went all the way through. So there's not even a joint there. <laughs> and then I was showing you here how you steer it. Basically, the back of the gun is like the front of the car. You know. Yeah, exactly. So the wire pushes it back. Yeah, the, I'll, I'll, I'll do this without welding, just so you can see the wire. 
I have a slight delay built in, and then you can see the wire is basically laying it over. So when I weld, you know. Just pulling the gun back. Yeah. So grab a, now that Doug's here, can we do one more coupon? Um, three sixteenths or three sixteenths is fine since that's what you have. And let's do the corner to corner makeup, the the one that we did very first. Can we can we re redo yeah. one of those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The actual like a half overlap ish. Half overlap's fine. Okay. Exactly the same as the first one you want to see. Yeah. Now remember the very first one that did a root. It was at a hundred percent. Then we go ahead tack that. Oops, I stick out. Is that the one? one we put the hold down tab on? Yeah. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Okay. So you can see it's maybe a little bit more than half overlap on there. That's fine. That's fine. So th we did that at F2, 1300. You did a root pass. It went 100%. Then I ask you to widen the the wobble, I guess, right? Yeah. So let's. Let's do half the widen of the wobble on a first pass. So did you do 90%? Let's do like 40 or 40% widen. Okay. That. Sounds good. And try to get, and, and whatever you think we need to do at the 1300 to get full pen on one pass. That's what I'm right. hoping to see. It, it may get it with this, but I'll, I'll just bump it 50 watts. I'll, I'll just do like a first inch and then we can kind of judge from there. Fine. So what we're trying to do is get... A little more than the root. I only want to do one pass. Yeah, so that's is what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. You know, we want one pass. On Perfect. <laughs> We're good. I also, I have the wire speed a tiny bit slower too. I forgot. I didn't change that back. Delayed and we don't see all of it. He does a long while we can't see all of it. Press. We're done. What's the fucking, what is this filler? 5356. But is it like a? So maybe I needed to go a tiny bit more power. I, I did a little pause at the start, so got a little more penetration at the start. Yeah, but you can see we're close to full pen right there. Yeah, super, right. super close. A little more. What would you do there? Turn the 1350 up to 1375, 1380, something like that? Yeah, maybe like 14, maybe just jump up to 15. I'd probably go up and then jump back. So that way I know I get it and then I can just t tune it down. But once we figured that out for our system here, it would be the same setting every single time. Yeah. Put that over and let's look at the outside as a finish. It's kind of like with laser cutting, you know, once you dial in those parameters for that thickness, it's pretty repeatable. Yep. You know, so, so you could see where we focus. So where we got, uh, the focus is not cooperating. <laughs> where we got the full penetration, you could see it got a little hotter, kind of rounded off the corner. And that's because right at the start, I did a delay. So it had a little extra heat in it. We like, that's what we like, where you started. Yeah, yep, for sure. I, I wish I did that the whole way down. <laughs> but that's... Uh, travel yeah. Speed. Travel speed. Yeah, maybe a... Try oh, yeah. Actually, you know what? I, I said I didn't my travel speed back up i did speed my travel speed back up i misspoke there so i'm i, I should have maybe kept kept it a little bit slower uh let me do that again with uh just two you know 
Yeah, let's do it again. With that, with before a, a billet weld, like an actual joint weld, like that, a ninety degree um, billet joint. Okay, like a T joint. Yeah. All right, so I'll slow my speed back down. That should do it. Yeah, so that was a little bit too much power, maybe. Uh, I slowed down 10 centimeters a minute. So maybe I should have gone five, or maybe I could have gotten away without changing the power up. Again, it's all in dialing it in. Yep, exactly. Right. Yeah, the beauty of this is one side 100% penetration. That's just. And that's that's the easy part. <laughs> I mean, it's all pretty easy, but it's it's not like uh, with the uh, how do I say? It? With like a TIG, you know, you got to get the technique down, and then you're gonna you're never gonna be able to get this much penetration. But the MIG, for sure, the same thing. This one, the penetration is not even something that you got to worry about. It's more just you know getting your parts fit up, and it's more settings and setup dependent rather than skill and. Uh, you know yep. the, the ability of the equipment for sure yeah i like it um if you want to take one more of those coupons and do one more um outside corner to corner with for us i think that'll pretty much uh i mean we've seen what we need to see i'm pretty impressed well, the only one I have left that's unwelded is the quarter inch um would you want just for fun to have one that's butt joint pen we don't do any of that here well no, do. it's all lap um, corner yeah, okay we do a lot of that well but no like this <laughs> out on the boat i know would we do it out on the boat without a room or it needs to be in a, on how badass this well it needs to be in a room or it needs to oh, be true, yeah. you know what i'm saying we need a clean a room with a door sensor on it or yeah. you know something yeah kind of thing. oh yeah well, so I'll, I'll do the same. I'll do the same kind of joint, but on this quarter inch, because that's what I got left. Is that okay? Yeah, that's more than fine. Then let's tack it together, and then let's talk about what you think the setting needs to be to go up in thickness and heat. Okay. All right, so yeah, as far as the settings go, we've got quarter inch aluminum here, so same thing, 5052. I'm just gonna go by what the chart says. That seems to be working pretty well. Aluminum 5000 series, F2, uh, 1800 watts with a negative 50% on the wobble frequency is what it recommends, and 35 centimeters a minute, which is a little slower than what we're going. So I'm just going to, I'm going to go with that again. I'll do another inch or so and we'll kind of analyze it and go from there. Okay, fine. So I like to just start with the chart because most of the time it's, it's perfect, you know, um, yeah. 1800 negative 50 on the frequency. And it goes up to 2000. Um, but you know, the test thing I did before the 1800, it's actually only says it's going to go to 239 thousands penetration, but I got it to go through the quarter inch. So um, it's probably just slight variances, you know. So I'll set that to zero. I'll go negative 50 on the frequency, negative five. And then we'll just kind of see what it needs. If it needs a little more power, I'll give it 
give it to it. I have another 200 watts to go. Oh, and my speed on my wire feeder, gonna go to 35. Little handhold on this guy too. Well, if you noticed right there, I didn't even change my settings at all. <laughs> and I just welded one millimeter to that quarter inch. I just, you know, went for it and it worked. Um, okay, so 1800 watts, negative five on the frequency. Do a little test here. Yeah, it's a lot. I don't need I don't even need that much. <laughs> okay, wow. so I can I could probably go a little faster, maybe. A little faster. 45. You got to think the cross section, this is quarter inch, but this cross section that I have set up here is not quarter inch. It's a little thinner than that. Mm -hmm. so, so I could probably get away with settings for thinner. So are you going to turn it down from 1800? Well, I tried just changing the speed first. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Still, still a lot of penetration. Looks a little bit like more of a controlled heat than this one. This one looks like it was running away a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we did not widen it yet. That would I'd recommend that as a second pass for the thicker material, probably. Um, can you or, I mean, a, like we could try it. Sorry, go. What'd you say? Would dual wire feed help at all, or no? It's possible. The thing with aluminum is, is that adding an additional wire will drastically change the heat input because the wire will, um, you know, lower the heat input. Yeah. Um, but but it's possible. What I'm going to try now is I'm going to go bigger wire, ninety percent on the width, and I'm going to crank the power all the way and just kind of see what we get because, you know, like you said, you'd rather do this on a single pass, right? So we would, yeah. Let's see what we can do. This is this is two thousand watts, ninety percent increase on width, fifty percent decrease on frequency, and forty centimeters a minute. So it's working pretty good. Oh, the widening really. Yeah. better so to get away with less power for sure yeah yeah but once you dialed it in what's the inside look like a lot of energy yeah a lot more than you need for sure And then just just again, so you can see during my testing, I did some some uh, quarter inch on a butt joint, and just you know I was playing with it. And uh, here's the controller. So here's that. So this is no gap, no bevel, no gap, completely butted together on the quarter inch. So there is. The front, I think the section to look at is here. I kind of went over multiple times in a couple other spots, but right here. That's you know, two pieces of quarter just butted right together. Wow. 
pretty impressive. Really impressive, actually. All right, any any questions from anybody? Did you show them why it works? Oh yeah, how what it's doing? Okay, yeah. Let me draw yeah. you a little pic. I'll draw you a picture of what it's doing here. You need a, some paper. Um. Yeah. I got, paper. I got a piece. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Glenn. I got it. But... Okay, so I'm just going to give you an idea of the difference between an arc weld and a, a laser weld. Um, and I'm, I'm the easiest way to draw this is in a, a butt joint configuration. So. Just imagine the butt joint here. Okay, and, and your arc processes, they're all gonna be pretty much the same as, as far as I'm concerned for this demonstration. So um, I'm just gonna kind of draw like a TIG welder here. Um, and then the laser. We have the laser nozzle here. Um, okay, so with your arc process, what you're gonna have going on is you know your your ground here, um, and you're gonna be the AC is different a little bit, but essentially you're short circuiting across the air gap, vibrating these particles, which the heat is going to expand outwards from there, and typically you're gonna end up with a weld with the filler wire that you know, look something like this, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that the heat, you have to wait for that heat to expand from this point, you know, there's no way to get right to welding down here. You got to start here and it slowly floods out. So it ends up with affecting a huge section of the material. Um, it's hard to get full penetration without overheating things. With aluminum, there's other things that come to play, uh, you know, when you overheat it. I think hydrogen bubbles or something that I was doing some research into um, when it gets like extra, extra hot, porosity, stuff like that. Um, and then the distortion that comes from welding with your traditional welding is typically due to a lot due to this. So at the surface, the width of the weld here is very wide. So when it contracts, you have a large, you know, big arrow of contraction here. And then down here at the root, it's very narrow. So you have like tiny bits of metal shrinking there. Um, so when you get a lot of shrinkage here, a lot of little shrinkage here, the part ends up warping like this. So at first it's hot and it goes this way. And then as it cools, it ends up coming like this. So this is very slow, wastes a lot of electricity. Most of the electricity is wasted. Um, and it's all because you're trying to get the electricity through this you know, to, to make its way all the way through the part. In some instances with like electric cars and stuff that people are seeing nowadays, this will fry your computers. You have to disconnect all the electronics. With the laser, you don't. So with the laser, these, these are electrons also, this is photons. So with the laser, we'll have a, we'll have a, a, a focusing window or focusing lens. So the light will come in, you know, like this, and then it'll, it'll bend the light with the lens into a focus point, which is tiny. Um, now it's going to wobble that laser back and forth, but I'm going to draw it without drawing that because it makes it a little more complex. So you're, you're going to take these photons of light, focus them down into a tiny point where they have an insane energy density. So 10,000 Watts per millimeter squared. This one's 50 Watts per millimeter squared. So 200 times the energy density here. Um, and then that energy is dense enough to not just vibrate the particles of metal here, but pierce a tunnel like into the surface like this, like a laser cutting machine. So think of like a, taking a lightsaber and just stabbing it into the metal and then dragging it along. That's what we're doing. This is real life <laughs> lightsaber guns pretty much. 
Um, so yeah, so basically we're piercing into the tunnel, getting down deep into the metal, or in this case, all the way through the metal very quickly. These photons of light are going to be bouncing around in that tunnel and create molten walls. So this tunnel is going to have, you know, molten walls. Basically, what all of this does is focus the energy extremely uh, into a very narrow heat affected zone. So our heat affected zone is super close to this tunnel. Uh, it happens very quickly. It's easy because you don't have to maintain the distance and sharpen your tungsten and get all, you know, it's this one. You just turn the laser settings on correctly and set the wire speeds and touch the metal and go. Uh, and then when it comes to the cooling shrinkage factor, you can see that the, the profile is not perfectly even. It's probably a little wider at the top. But overall, it's a lot closer. So we're going to have a lot more even contraction. So the metal will you know, stay a lot flatter. Yeah. And what about Thank oxides? That yeah, and then also, of... also the oxides on your typical metal, or your, you know, typical aluminum, you have the oxide layer that, you know, when I take weld aluminum, which I do quite often, I'm always brushing that off, cleaning it with acetone, very important, because that oxide layer melts at a much higher temperature than this base aluminum here. So you have to get through that. By the time you get through that, you've blown out the bottom here. So you, that's why you need to remove that first. Obviously it's still better to do that because you have less chance of getting those aluminum oxides included into the weld. But the laser's energy density allows it to just blow right through that. So it'll go right through it and weld down here. And in some instances, you know how you see the, see the sheet and it'll say like 60, 61 on it or something in like red ink or however that works. In some instances, I'll weld and then I'll see the the writing on top of the weld because it gets it just goes right past it, mm -hmm. and then it floats on the surface. So so, not saying that it's good to leave the oxide on, but what I'm saying is, it doesn't make it more difficult to weld. You can just weld without cleaning it for sure. Most of the metal we yeah, have to sitting... weld in MIG and TIG when you when you get those. Uh, absolutely, it slows the weld down. Yeah. So that's kind of the concept. There's a lot more to it. There's actually a lot of really good information on the internet I've been finding just, you know, ever since well, I started. Thank you for that. That was a good explanation. It was very helpful to, to follow you through that. So it makes no sense problem. too. Agreed. Makes a lot of sense. All right. Any, any questions from you guys? No, I want to thank you for your time. I know this was painful getting this thing set up. It took us seemed like a month or longer to get this going, but hey, we, we got through it and I'm glad we did. And it gives us a lot to talk about from our side. And uh, then John, you can follow up. If we got any questions, um, we need to process what we just saw Yeah. and uh, talk amongst and see where this might be of uh, value to our operation. And uh John has visited us here. We got a lot going on. I got 30, 36 MIG machines running around the shop on a loop system, 18, 19 wow. boats under construction, 36. Uh, uh, these are um, Aluma, Aluma Weld Miller um, uh, MIG machines that are, that are pulsed. They have pulse capability. And then what do we got? Four TIG machines. Um, and one of them, two of them are remote to go out and do TIG on boats, you know, and then most of it's bench work. And so, yeah, we got a lot going on here. We just need to find out where this piece of equipment might uh, uh, you know, have some value to it. And, and I mean, there's value there just watching it, but now we need to put it into play on how our organization works. Sure. Sounds good to me. Let me if you had any questions, just reach out and we can answer them. Okay, good. Thank you for your guys' time. Sorry it took an hour and a half, but uh, it was well worth it for me. Hopefully it was for you too. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. no problem. Thank you, Evan. Okay, guys. We'll talk soon, John. Yeah, thank right. you. Have a good one. Thanks, Have a good guys. one, guys. Bye-bye.